Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Disco Elysium. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that he chose to join me today as we talk to these jerks uh, about our uh, suspect, basically. This man's mother was Lillian, says Trent. He's Lillian's son, Lilianovic. The custom was turned after the revolution failed, but not before it, it made it to Revachol. That's the custom of giving... The, the, the surname being of the mother, I think. I'm not really sure how it works, but yeah. So it is what a soldier of the ICM would be called. Thank you for... for uh, thank you, Trent. Thank you for that piece of cultural theory. He tur uh, John Vickmer turns to me. You said you have a motive? Of course. Excuse me. I just thought it was noteworthy. It was absolutely our logic. On a challenging success as he wasn't quite sure about the straggler before he heard this detail... It must have convinced him. Oh yeah, that's an important detail, actually. About him being... Having a, a communist name. How dare he be named after his mother? Communism! <laughs> it's literally, in this case. Um, so, he killed the mercenary in an act of jealousy is the first option. He killed the mercenary hoping to start a war between the company and the union. He killed the merc... That's the second option. He killed him in an act of rage induced by the phasmids socio... Uh, si Semio chemicals. So we know it's because of jealousy. We know it's because of jealousy, right? Use the boat to return to the mainland. Inspect the phasmid, yeah. Extract a motive. Well, it doesn't tell us that, but it is. It was the jealousy. Because this is what he said first, but then we extracted it to be out of jealousy. Jealousy. I thought this Lilianovic was an old man to have been hiding for 50 years. 70-something? A strange psychosexual fixation, aggravated possibly by proximity to the phasmid and its chemicals. He himself gave a political reason, said he had killed an enemy combatant. Also, we have ballistics from the gun matching the bullet found in the dead mercenary's head. And two officers on the scene that Mr. Draws confessed to. It's a clean win, says Judith. It's way more than that, says our Inland Empire. I don't understand. The woman... Oh, wait a minute. We were supposed to assume that our ex-something was... Our ex-something was our ex-wife. Why didn't the game just say ex-wife? It's like, it doesn't matter what the ex-something is. Especially now that the game just comes out and says that it is an ex-wife. Or ex-girlfriend or whatever. Uh, but ex-woman. Let's go with that. Um, because look at this option. It's way more than that. I'll win her back with this. I'm not sure who she is. Or, like, what part of... What she was to me, specifically. I'm gonna say the first one. It's more than that. A perfect folding mechanism. Like the phasmid. Perfect folding mechanism. He rolls his eyes. Get over yourself, Harry. I can still smell the booze on the wind. God damn it. Doesn't it ever leave... It is there, like in your bones or something, says our perception smell. Yes, it would be in our bones. The bones would be made of the things that we drink. It will pass in time, says our volition. It will, don't worry about it. The previous head of the Debard Dorza's union was assassinated by our killer. The lieutenant lowers his voice just a little. This is a conversation for when we are no longer out in the open in Martinez, where Evracht and Edgar Clare have ears everywhere. And eyes, too, says our reaction speed. Your return from the island must not have gone unnoticed. Understood, of course. But a case against Evart would be big, says our esprit de corps. The consultant, too, has lowered his voice. I would prefer not to partake in anything union-related for political neutrality. Yeah, good job, political neutrality while working with the police. This has to be good stuff for him to backpedal out of if uh, 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 backpedal out of it at first mention. Uh, there was also a dead man on the boardwalk, a missing person I found. 
Yes, yes, fallen through a gap in the boardwalk. Drunk. How did you know I found him? The body was transported to Precinct 41, our morgue. I had uh, Tilbrook and Mullins take care of the funeral arrangements and family stuff, says Judith. You're not the only cop in the world, Harry. This all comes back to us. Still, she says quietly, good work with the missing person, detective. Yes, it was. Um, I also screwed it up, but still. I also looked into the mystery of the doomed commercial area. I don't think I figured it out, though. Otherwise, I wouldn't say it like looked into. John Vic Mayer shrugs. I don't know what about... Uh, I don't know what a doomed commercial area is. Uh, Rue de saint Guillaume, 10. A commercial building where all businesses go bankrupt. I looked into it. Why? That's not what you were supposed to do here. There was a fridge we needed, says Kim. And a possible witness. He was just chasing a lead and ended up advising a local shopkeeper. It was okay. <laughs> it was okay, says Kim. Of course. Judith says as she turns to Vic Mayer. Call it community outreach, right? Dodged the bullet there. For a moment, it seemed like you were just wasting time, says our reaction speed. Shut up. Uh, I also confiscated drugs from Kuno's dad. Who's Kuno? Oh, you, you love Kuno. You don't want to know, says Kim. You're right. The uh, lieutenant, I don't. He turns to you. You snorted the drugs. I know you did. It's all right. I mean, at this point, anything is, is but the drink. Oh, right, right. Anything is coma but the drink. Anything is all right except the drink. Um, so what do you say? Want to take this hot shit back? And I'm pointing to myself. I'm the hot shit. We can't, we can't say fuck them. That's not the story we're telling here. I don't want to, but you discovered a new species and solved the murder. He shrugs. So I have to. Jude. A quick nod. Anything that ends the trial is okay with me. You haven't been drinking, she thinks, says our esprit de corps. So maybe this time... Trent says, Agreed. The public relations potential of this is too valuable to let go. Okay, he sighs. We have vehicles in the square, and the perpetrator needs to be taken into custody. Let's go. Wait, I have a few questions before we go. About who I am. The man looks westward impatiently. Jingling his car keys in his pocket. Okay, am I a dirty cop working for La Puta Madre? No. No? Because the suspect seemed to think you're too unstable to work for a mob boss. You're suicidal, Harry. No boss, mob boss would take you. I assure you, I wouldn't consult for a corrupt unit, says Trent. He would immediately backpedal out of it, <laughs> says our logic. Uh, that's the third time they use that word. Why am I like this? It's not a mystery. Some chick fucked you over. Also, you're a drunk. Some chick. Who? Dora something. Dora Ingerlund? He thinks. Yeah, that sounds Swedish. You mentioned her name. Not Dora Dubois says our reaction speed. Wait, I'm gonna say. Dora Ingerland? Something like that. Half Vazen, or Vazen, or whatever. So we weren't even married. N no one is married anymore. This is Revishol. Oh, really? Uh, good for you, I suppose. When was this? Uh, God, I don't know. Six years ago? Uh, she was way before my time. <laughs> okay, six years is not that much. Holy crap, it's not that much. <laughs> it's six years. I'm gonna say six years with exclamation, oh, not exclamation mark, but, or Intero Bank, but uh, capital S-I-X for the six. It couldn't have been six. Three, let's go with three. I'm gonna say six years. Yeah, or seven. We're not doing too good there. It's an old man thing. Two old years equals one normal year. That and uh, Dora Ingerlund really tore you when you won. A big one. Who was she? Incredibly bangable? Huh? She was extremely fuckable, Harry. Gorgeous. A, a gorgeous bourgeois woman. Wayfish, like a welkin, basically. I don't know what a welkin is. Heartbreak welkin, says our Inland Empire. I have no idea what that means, but sure, you go ahead. 
I've only seen a picture, but it's obvious you formed a real spiritual connection with how pretty she was. One you never recuperated from. Look, says Judith. She turns to face the sea. The sun is about to go down. No, it isn't. Shut up. <laughs> it's 4, 4 p.m. 4.20, but blaze it. It's time to go home. Is she actually... Wait a minute. Is this... Is she trying to not talk about her? Does she like Dubois? Judith, I mean? Hmm. That's that's an indictment there. Or it, it could say more about her character than it does about our own character. But I think it would be... Normally you'd think that is an indictment. Maybe. I don't know. It's like... People like people that don't deserve to be liked every day, everywhere in the world, so who knows? Maybe Dubois didn't deserve to be liked. Or maybe he did deserve to be liked. Who knows? I'm trying to make him deserve to be liked right now, after he lost his memory, but I don't know either uh, if I have achieved that goal either. Um, but still, I think that might be where she, what she means by that. And Jean Vicmer says, I think she taught in the Academy the Acht. Uh, ooh, that's interesting, because you'd say Dach. Da, with a D apostrophe arts. You wouldn't say des Art. Would you say des Art? You could. You could say des Art. So I, I don't suppose you have to the abbreviate. Academy des Art. And I don't know if art is pronounced art. I don't think it is. I think it's ah, which is weird to my ears, but it's French. I don't know. East of the river. Way east. Hard to say which came first, the middle class chick or the drink. Egg and the chicken kind of thing. My point... Also, uh... I... Uh, John... I don't know, like, the other thing about painting people here... Is that this either paints... Uh... Well, actually, it might be both. Uh, I was gonna say, it either paints Jean Vic Mare as a very superficial person... Or it paints, uh, Dubois as a, a very superficial person... To be this heartbroken about just... Somebody who he saw as an object. Because... Uh, who... Who said that he built a, a connection to how pretty she looked? I don't remember what part of it, uh, of the dialogue was about that. But if he saw um, his ex-girlfriend as, as uh, just an object to bang, then, yeah, superficial person. But the thing is, maybe that's just Vic Meyer's, uh perspective. I don't know. My point is you need to see a psychiatrist uh, psychi psychiatrist about this shit, not a psychologist. Several degrees harder. Is there something harder than a psychiatrist? He pauses. A forensic psychiatrist? Go talk to that. In other words, he's heard enough about this. Yeah? Have you? Who am I? Who are you? You're a gym teacher, Harry. What? Well, obviously you're not a gym teacher anymore, but... But before, before you were a cop, you were a gym teacher in Courant. She looks around. It's getting really old outside, or really cold outside. Should we maybe? That does explain a lot. Harry, it explains everything. The running around. <laughs> Kim doesn't like running around. The jumping, the shot put. I don't know what shot put means. Your inexplicable facial hair. And my expression, did I, f I didn't fix my expression. The collection of fall sport fallen sportswear I've amassed. The fact that you don't seem to know what homosexuality is. <laughs> oh, that, that's, oh boy. Um, um, when was this? When was I a gym teacher? In your 20s or late 20s? It's still the twenties, but anyway, you're really let uh, you've really let yourself go since then. He looks you over. So you said Courant? I was a gym teacher there. Yeah, you taught gym in Courant. I believe that's the term. Taught gym at high school. You were a high school gym teacher. The smell of sweat and glue, the worn floorboards, says our perception. High school, Harry. Your goings on with Kuno, Andre, Asel, the whole thing on the ice. That's why you're so juvy, says Kim. His smirk suggests barely contained laughter. Kim? Why did I join the RCM then? 
the regular. You found some chick. She inspired you to fight the big fight. Be more than you are, all that. You, you are in our Inland Empire says, you, every morning, walking from Voyager Road to teach, uh, teach Jim. She, leaving for the academy with her spring coat, the air filled with the smell of smoke and raspberries, and incredible hope. An ocean full of hope. Okay, I see now. I knew it. I knew no normal human being could run like that. <laughs> Kim, you're always complaining that I'm running. <laughs> he's an <laughs> He says, he's an honest to God gym teacher. Come on, Kim, shut up. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's the best thing that he's ever said throughout the whole game. Uh, Precinct 41, what kind of station is it? Us. We're a bloody murder station. Haven't you heard? We're the bad guys. No one likes us. That's not true, says Kim. Jamrock is too big for, uh, for one precinct. You're just understaffed, and everyone respects the 41st. You have Captain Price. Thank you, Lieutenant. You're being kind. It is an understaffed station, and the district is too big, which is why we need to... He tilts his head northward. Get back to it, says Judith. We left Torson and McLean to run the Sea Wing. It's not good. Torson and McLean. I don't like them. I don't remember him. Mac the Torso Torson? And Chester McLean, she, ar she arches an eyebrow. They're not fit to run a wing. Believe me, things are shaky as it is. And the sea, sea wing is? God. There are four wings, Harry. A, B, C, and D. We're in C. It's made of losers and clock punchers. You and I reconceptualized it as a task force. And it was a mistake. There's also a lot of outside help involved. Not only me, he smiles. Other losers, too. He's anything but a loser, says our suggestion. Although he would like to be seen as one. It's cooler that way. Mm, and Price? Ptolemy, Ptolemy Price? Asks Judith. He's the son of o the old Price. One of the founders of the RCM. He's one of the most highly regarded men in the force. You're lucky, says Kim. Somewhere under the curved roof of a formal silk, uh, former silk factory. Shaped like a lady, uh, ladybird with two chimneys. Police Captain Ptolemy Price. Behind a, sits behind a heavy wooden desk. Resident medic Nix Gottlieb pours him coffee. It's silent in the captain's office. They speak of change, the city, the tension on the streets. They speak of the events of April and the blood on the streets in May. Uh, did we recently shoot up a church by any chance? I'm going to point to the church. So he remembers that. Yeah. There may have been a raid on some churches. It wasn't good press. Shooting up churches never is. I was out of town, to be clear. What happened? Why did we need to go there? Our enemies were hiding in a church, to the best of our information. That's it. I'm not talking about this anymore. Your security clearance is shit tier right now. You have to wait for it to go up. Your clearance will not go up, says our perception hearing for some reason. While you're within earshot of the Union Air headquarters... It's a challenging success. Why would it be a challenging success for one thing that's basically a reasoning thing? So I work in the bloody murder station. Okay, it's not the bloody murder station. It's an old converter silk mill with green desk lamps and a coffee corner. A lot of good people work there hard every day. Jamrock is the largest ghetto in Revachol. Faubourg technically, but it's divided into 11 districts. Jamrock only has us, says Judith. The press will blow over. Uh, Kim says in a reassuring tone, Jamrock is lucky to have you, and it's often considered to be the greatest of the districts. You're lucky to have it. Well, thank you again, Lieutenant, says jean vic Khmer. Lena. Yeah, Lena, the lady, the cryptozoologist lady. The Phasmid. I need to tell Lena about it about it as as soon as possible. Who is Lena? A cryptozoologist. She lives, she lives in Jamrock. She told me about this Phasmid. Well, good luck finding her once we get back. She and her husband were conducting the search for the Phasmid. It's their discovery, in part. He turns to you. I'm sure we'll find them. They should soon... They should soon as... They should know as soon as possible. It would not... It would do you good to deliver some positive news for a change. She's going to be over the moon, says our suggestion. Hopefully so. I w her messages were a little bit mixed. Lieutenant Kitsuragi, what will you do now? Well, first I will go back to my station and write the most detailed report anyone has ever seen. 
it will have to be good to cover all of this. Then I will have a serious talk with my captain. About what? He pulls his collar and look, uh, pulls his collar up and looks around. The cold spring light reflected in the lenses of his glasses. Detective, we just stopped a small-scale war. Something is happening to Revachol. I don't know what yet, but it's going to be a hard spring for the RCM. We need to get ready. Infiltrate. Investigate. Want to do that as Station 41? Talk to Captain Price? I'd rather not ruffle the feathers of two captains with my doom-mongering. No, I meant investigate. Come work in Precinct 41. Work with Price? A crooked smile quivers on his lips. I'm flattered, but I don't know if I... would fit in, says our esprit de corps. Am, am crazy enough? Can take the stress? He doesn't know how to finish the sentence. This truly came as a surprise to him. Not a bad one, but he's a little lost, says our rhetoric. Flattered? Your Lieutenant Kitsuragi. We would be flattered if you have even considered. The man turns very serious all of a sudden, Kim does. It would take... It, I would have to tie things up in the G-R-I-H first. But, I mean, whatever is coming, Jamrock will be more central to it than the harbor. And we also have a huge caseload, Lieutenant, says Judith, with a smile. Piles that we need to get back to. Mountains, even. I do like the sound of that, he returns the smi uh, her smile. He's really considering it, says our rhetoric. Well, I'm ready. Good, she looks at you, and then Vic Mare. Fuck it, let's go. The man points down the street. Trent? Oh, he says, Trent brought his motor carriage. It's a 20-minute drive to Jamrock. Under the noonday sky, the great district hums. A chessboard of wooden houses. 80,000 living souls and chimneys stacks. Fire traps, as far as the eye can see. From the main street to Precinct 41. To Bougie Street forking into snow-swept horizon. You close your eyes and hear the dogs bark. A lone woman sits by a factory window, dreaming of meteorite strikes. On the Rue de saint Jérôme, a square bullet slides into a square-shaped chamber. That's our square bullet hole case. In Old South, a man without eyelids smiles. Spring has come. It's time. Torsen? Yes. McLean? Yes. Heidelstam? Yes. Oh, no! Not Heidelstam. Vic Mare? Yes. Dubois? Of course. Really? Nix Gottlieb looks up from the list. I hear he's unstable, he says. You say that like it's a bad thing, Captain Ptolemy Price gestures with a ballpoint pen. It's dim in the office and the curtains are drawn. Harry's our man. He'll pull through. When he does, he'll side with the people. Understood. Gottlieb returns to the list. Mino? Of course. Wonderful, the woman looks north. Then can we please just go back to Jamrock now? And that is Disco Elysium. <sighs> what a game. There's nothing like this. More games should be like this. But I think what real... I, I mean, the systems of the game are fantastic. It's a small map. Um, but it's just... It's an enormous game. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of text. Um, but, uh, but the systems of the game, I think, are fantastic. Like, you can make any game with this system anywhere you like. And you can make it interesting as long as you write it well. And I think this game is like... It's one of the most well-written games I've I've seen uh, ever, honestly. Like, I, I hesitate to say it's the best written, but I could, you know, I could I could go for that maybe. I, I would have to think. It's hard because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of other games that are well written. Well, there's a few other games that are well written, um, but this game more than just being well written in in regards to the themes and and the characters and some of the lines are just brilliant. I still don't know what the metaphor is for the phasmid, but we'll see. Um, the, um, besides it being well-written, I think more than anything, 
It's provocateur. It's like, oh, uh, it's 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 provocative. That's the word. Uh, it it like it's written in a way that makes it entertaining, uh, more than just. It's not concerned about explaining an idea. It, it's not concerned about telling you a story. Um, and even though it has, um, by the way, we're seeing the uh, we're seeing the the voice actors. They're all on screen right now. Tiago over there, Johnny Hage and stuff. Um, but um, more than uh. <laughs> Fuck the world over there. Will Menneker. Um More than... Um, I think more than anything, even though it's not an ideally written game, um, or the text itself is not, like, it's not flawless, for sure. Like, not I'm not talking about grammatical errors or, or just weird words that he uses here and there. I'm talking about, like, thematic consistency... Uh, and uh, things that it throws at you that you never really understand, and I don't know that the game actually ever can explain you some concepts. Uh, I think that's a, te a telltale sign of the game being concerned more about providing an interesting experience than actually telling you a story that the narrator or the, that the writers thought up in their heads. Because that's, I think, that's the biggest problem with a lot of stories is that they don't allow for the enjoyment of reading, the enjoyment of, of being told a story, and they fo oftentimes focus on, on telling you a story that they thought up. And sometimes it's really good, sometimes it works really well. But the story here, it's a typical RPG story. It's not really there. Like, I often find it very weird when people say that, oh, Fallout 1 is really good, but the graphics are really bad, and the gameplay is not that good, but the story is really nice. Uh, um, people say, I say Fallout 1, Fallout 2, whatever. Um, the, the and but the story is really nice and I'm like, it isn't. I mean, it is. The, the, the setting is, but like, that's not what the game is about. Like somebody saying that the story of Disco Elysium is really good, it's not doing it credit. It's not really touching what is good about the writing in this game, because what is good about the writing in this game is the characters and the interactivity. For sure, the interactivity. It's written like an RPG should be written, uh, but it's written as well. But it's written as well, not just as it should be written, but it takes advantage of the systems the game has. Um, and the systems, I think, are fantastic. I really enjoy the lack of focusing on stats, even though it does focus on stats a lot. Like, it's not what you're there for. It doesn't matter if you, oh, I really want to max out this skill, or I really want to... Um, to have this item that gives me plus 10% this or plus 10% that. Like, you focus on that for sure on the gameplay basis. But more than anything, I think um, it's about the, the checks. So in that way, it replicates tabletop uh, role-playing, especially low-level D&D tabletop role-playing games. It replicates it very well. Because in D&D, the, the way it works, not so much in other uh, role-playing games, but in D&D, what happens is that at low levels... Uh, your skills are barely barely make any difference because the way it works is um, is you throw a d20 and then you add to that your skill level. But the thing is, your maximum skill level at level one or two is usually like five or six, and usually it's even lower than that. So what end up, ends up happening is that whenever you try to do something, uh, even if you're relatively skilled at that particular thing, the dice are uh, are going to be responsible for the result. So what ends up happening is that people who are skilled at something can fail, whereas the, their companion goes in there, let me look at that, and then they roll high, and then they succeed at that. So the experience of playing low-level D&D is very much about that, uh, and it, it sort of trains you uh, into not really caring about failure, because you're it's always there, it's always going to be a possibility. And I think that's a good thing. Maybe in longer campaigns it has an effect that I haven't been personally introduced to, because I've never played a longer campaign in D&D, but uh, at low levels definitely trains you to just be okay with failure. And this game trains you to be okay with failure from the beginning. Honestly, you want to succeed on things, obviously, but uh, I, sort of wish it, I, I sort of wish it went more in there, in the failures, uh, and uh, allowed you to fail or allowed you to have more skill checks here and there that you could fail, but that they were just silly or interesting. And you decided, you know what, I'm going to do that, even though I, I know I'm going to fail, or probably I'm going to fail. Things that you know are, aren't going to be catastrophic, like throwing yourself flying against a, a woman in a wheelchair. That's a catastrophic failure in my book. But, um, but yeah, uh, I think 
this is a one-of-a-kind game, and it shouldn't be a one-of-a-kind game. From the writing, um, it's it's witty, it's smart, it's like uh, it's funny a lot of the time. It's really emotional a lot of the time, and it just pulls it off very well. It's like a symbiosis between the systems and the writing. It's written like this. This is one game that was thought up from the ground up um, to to serve the writing that it has, and I think that's lovely. That's that's rare, actually, a lot of the time. You can see a lot of games where the gameplay doesn't really fit the writing. And the writing, even though it might, may be good, can be harmed by the systems that the game has. Uh, usually if the... Well, usually if the game is focused on combat. And this game not focusing on combat is not at all a problem. And I've been saying for a long, long time that RPGs don't have to have combat. I'm not even talking about tabletop RPGs, because of course tabletop RPGs don't have to have combat, but I'm talking about like computer role-playing games. And a lot of people, I, think I used to get more of a kickback or a, more of a pushback when I was younger than right now. Um, maybe because I'm older now, but also because people just drop that pretense. But me saying that games like The, the, like, uh, the Sims are good RPGs, that's more, you know, it's it's more of a thought experiment than a real serious tr uh, attempt at, at uh, categorizing The Sims as an RPG. It's not really my point. But the roleplay you do in The Sims is the same itch that you get in roleplaying in a lot of other RPGs as well. Uh, and uh, The Sims even has a lot of stats, and it even has combat if you want to pick a fight with anybody. But then again, so does this game have combat if you want to pick a fight with anybody. Uh, the point is, this is, I think... The first time an RPG, an amazing RPG, so it doesn't even have to be a bad example, it's an amazing example of an RPG without combat, in the traditional sense anyway, um, and I think it's brilliant. I, I don't think it needs combat. Um, on a second playthrough, you're going to get it so much more though. Um, I might, I, I will, I'll probably do another Let's Play of this, eventually. I'm not, I'm going to let it sink. Uh, I'm going to let it sit. I'm going to let it uh, sort of marinate in my brain for a few uh, months at the very least, and maybe I'll come back on camera. But for right now, that's it. 130-something episodes in. It's a long game. I definitely took a while. I definitely ramble a lot. But the thing about rambling, uh, I mean, if you're still here, you're okay with my rambling. I have changed my... I have changed... I think I've changed a little bit of... Uh, at least in the quantity of the rambling. I've embraced it over the years. I, I didn't start out quite as rambly. I, th I, I think I've always rambled in my Let's Plays, but I think this game sort of... I think this game... Not just this game, but... Uh, not just this game. I've always rambled, but I think this game is probably the example of me rambling. In other games that I'm playing right now on the channel... Uh, like Queen's Wish, for example, and Deus Ex, <laughs> Mass Effect. Uh, I ramble in those, and Under Rail as well. The second playthrough that I'm doing, I ramble. I analyze the stories and analyze my ideas and explain things and my perspective. And uh, I'm a lot more intrusive in your own experience of this game. So you're getting much, much more of my own perspective than you are th th than you would get if I just allowed you to have your own take. If I just read the text out loud. But I think for this game, um, more so than others, but for this game in particular, um, and I'm talking here from from the, the perspective of the let's play, not so much the game, but for, and for my perspective as a let's player, I think I think it's good. I hope you agree. Um, and if you do or if you don't, let me know in the comments. I I, I have gotten very good reception about my rambles, uh, so I'm very glad for that. And thank you for those of you who have reached out and told me that you enjoy my rambles. Thank you very much for listening to them more than. Uh, more than anything, but also to for reaching out. Um, I think for this game it's important. Because in a game that has combat, you're going to get the reactions of the um, Let's Player of, f to the combat, right? You just, you're fine. Oh no, that's scary. Oh no, that guy is so tough. Oh gosh, I'm shooting you. Die, you jerk. Oh no, I died. That's bad. I really don't like this or whatever. And you know that sort of reaction you get when you watch a Let's Play of a game that has combat? When you watch a let's play of a game that only has dialogue, you ne you don't unless the let's player is going to talk about their reaction to the dialogue, you're not going to get those. You're not going to get the insight into what is going on 
in the head of the Let's Player unless the Let's Player stops and talks about what's going on. And oftentimes, I mean, I like, I like to think that I add something uh, to the game as well as just telling you my perspective. I like to think that um, my own take on it, like explaining certain concepts, especially when it comes to uh, things about things that I'm more or less uh, at ease with, maybe with language because I'm Portuguese, or maybe with cultural um, cultural influences, like the surnames or whatever they were. Like, I'm not perfect, I don't know everything, I wish I knew everything, and I wish I could tell you all the things and I could point out all the little nooks and references and all this sort of stuff, but I can't. Um, so, I, I had what I can. And of course, in this game, it's a very political game, um, and and, uh, and uh, I also had my perspective to that and my explanation of certain concepts. Um, it's a... I don't know, I, I think, I think it... This game deserves those rambles. And my Let's Plays, I think, need that those rambles for the dialogue. Um, so yeah. I hope you, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know in the comments if you have, or th your reaction, what do you think about the game. Uh, and, uh, thank you so much for watching. I, yeah, thank you very much for hanging in there. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoyed it. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.